mindset in terms of research and stuff? Like, is it everything in town? Crockpots, pipe plugs, crockpots, drip tapes. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome here to Fansler Field. Uh, a little bit late on the start here on this one, and a little bit late on the start for us here as well. Val and Steve here with Chris, and Val, go ahead and get us up to date on where we are in this game, please. All right, we have no score. Top of the second inning. Haven Shipper is batting for Southwood, facing Bria Rensberger. The count is three and two. Nobody on, one out. Uh, Southwood comes in with a record of four and one. Rochester's three and four. This is the conference opener for both teams. Got her looking. Five consecutive strikeouts for Bria Rensberger in the circle. She walked Riley Thomas to lead off the game. Thomas then stole second. But that is the only base runner Southwood has had. As Rensberger struck out Rowan Goodpasture, Grace Lambert, Izzy Ashba in a row to end the first inning. And then she struck out Natalie Sutman and Haven Shipper looking to start the second inning. And the last three Ks have been backwards Ks. So she is definitely fooling the Southwood lineup as that will bring up the senior right fielder, Maddie Culver. Culver is a 111 hitter. She's one for nine on the season. And she falls behind in the count 0 1. Southwood, as we mentioned, is 4 1. Their lone loss was last night. They lost at Eastbrook 3 2 in eight innings. Pitch is high, 1 1 the count. No Jim Coleman today, no David Musselman today. We, we presume this is game three of a suspension. Dating back to what happened in the Logansport game last Wednesday. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss, 1-2. and two. Rochester beat Southwood by 10 run rule last year at Southwood. Nobody's thinking anybody's beating anybody by 10 run rule in this one. Ball. It's 2-1 two or 2-2? Two two. It's 2-2 two two. to Culver. Got her swing and a rise ball. Side retired. Six consecutive strikeouts for Bria Rensberger. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of an inning and a half, no score between Rochester and Southwood. You're watching RTC TV4. We're back here at Fansler Field, and the first pitch in the bottom of the second inning from Natalie Setman to Miley Heinzman results in a swing and a miss. Heinzman down on the count 0-1. It'll be Heinzman, Mia Hanushell, and Gabby Medina due for Rochester here in the bottom of the second. Fouled off 0-2. Aubrey Miller, the, uh, Rochester had a golden opportunity to score in the bottom of the first. Aubrey Miller led off with a single to center field and then Aubrey Wilson singled to right center field. Miller went from first to third on the play. They tried to throw Miller out of third but the throw was way late and Miller moved up to second on the play. Popped up, fouled on the right field line and it is out of play and the count hangs at 0-2. So Rochester had runners at second and third with nobody out but Sutman struck out Braylon Hunter. She struck out Bria Rensberger and she struck out Jaden Field to get out of it. So, no runs, no hits, no errors for Southwind. No runs, two hits, no errors for Rochester. Count 0-2 to Heinzman. Miley, sophomore second baseman. Hitting 316 on the season. She is 6 for 19 
And she, uh, three of her six hits are doubles, and she has six RBIs. Team leader in RBIs is Hunter with seven. Heinzman and Wilson have six RBIs each. Another foul ball. Sutphin had no walks and nine strikeouts in that tough loss at Eastbrook last night. One common opponent between Rochester and Southwind, and if you're a Lady Zebra fan, you might want to cover your ears here. The one common opponent is Eastern. Rochester lost to Eastern here on Monday 8-3, and Southwood beat Eastern by 10 run rule. Beat them 15-4 back at, and that was at Eastern back on March 19th. Southwood played their season opener on March 19th, but this is another foul ball. Then they played, they played a non-conference game against Northfield on March 25th, and they didn't play again until April 10th. This is their third game in three days. They beat Bluffton 6 to nothing on Monday, lost at Eastbrook last night, as we mentioned. And then they've got a non-conference game at Wabash tomorrow. Again, Rocha, as for Rochester, put in play... Win is going to be a factor, but except good pasture was right there. It's a good battle by Heinzman, but she winds up popping out to second base. Yeah, how to shell the couple plate. Mia is a junior first baseman. Mia is a 235 hitter, four for 17 on the year, three RBIs. Coach Coleman, no Coach Musselman here today. So that's Scott Hottishell in the third base coaching box and Billy Medine in the first base coaching box. As Mia falls behind in the count 0 1. Strike two. Southwood with an all-sophomore battery of Natalie Sutphin and Grace Lambert, and these they were impressive last year. I mean, they Southwood upset North Miami at North Miami in the sectional. And made it all the way to the sectional final before Caston knocked them out. But this was a team that really improved as the season went on. Got her swinging. Strike number four for Sutton. Two outs in the inning, and Gabby Medina will bat. Gabby is a 118 hitter. She's two for 17. One of those two hits was a double. By stock now. Gabby Medina is going to hit. 0 and 1. By stock now. One to send a nice pick by Combs, the throw. Got her, and that retires the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the second, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of two innings, no score between Rochester and Southwood. You're watching RTC TV4. We're back here at Fansler Field. It will be Combs. Pershing and Thomas do for Southwood here in the top of the third. We have a scoreless game. Meanwhile, over Bob Copeland Field, the Rochester and Southwood baseball teams are tied 1-1 bottom of the third. Southwood baseball is 1-4. Rochester baseball teams have been playing well. They won three in a row. So far tied. Kraft and Reinert's the pitching matchup over at Bob Copeland Field in the first pitch. From Rensberger to Combs results in a swing and a miss. Lily Combs is a senior. With two seniors in their lineup. A 182 hitter. Two for 11 on the year. Count is one and one. Two. Looks like she got a 
Got in on the hands there. Combs able to fight it off, but she's down in the count now, one and two. Got her swinging, seven straight strikeouts. That looked like a change, I think. Either a change or a curve. But you go in on the hands and then you go away. Southwich is not getting a read on Rhea Rensberger. Haley Pershing swings and misses. Pershing is a freshman. She is the left fielder for the Lady Knights, and she is 0 for 6 on the season. Southwood as a team came in hitting 3.43. They're hitting 0 0 0 so far today. 0 and 2. Got her swing, eight consecutive strikeouts. And that will bring up the junior first baseman, Riley Thomas, their leadoff hitter. She walked her first time up, stole second, but got stranded. She shows bunt, takes high, goes to the backstop. I want to know. This is kind of a, a big, uh, I would argue, kind of a big early situation in this game. You really want to get Thomas. You don't want a good pasture hitting with anybody on base. You could argue that good pasture is their best hitter. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Riley Thomas has struck out five times in 19 at-bats this year. She also has six hits, though. She puts it in play. Round ball to short. Wilson throws. Got her to retire the side. So the streak of eight straight strikeouts comes to an end. But it's another 1-2-3 inning for Bria Rensberger. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left at the end of two and a half innings. No score between Rochester and Southwood. You're watching RTC TV4. We're back at Fansler Field. It'll be Strasser, Miller, and Wilson due for Rochester in the bottom of the third against Natalie Sutphin in this scoreless contest. Yeah, thanks for your patience. We had some internet issues and able to be here for the first pitch, but we're happy to be here for this TRC opener. Other TRC softball slash baseball matchups tonight, North Miami at Whitco, Peru at Lewis Cass, Northfield at Wabash, Manchester at McConaughey. Count is 0-1 on Strasser. And North Miami has dominated this conference for a long time going back pre-pandemic but this year they seem to be a little vulnerable 0-2 the count again North Miami lost to Pioneer 11-0 the other day I... we'll see how this turns out but Southwood I, I think senses an opportunity 1-2 Line to center. Base hit for Strasser. Dara came in hitting 308. That'll go up. And now that'll bring up Aubrey Miller. And let's see what Coach Hadeshell has in store here. Aubrey. Came into this game hitting 389. She was 7 for 18, make it 8 for 19 after that hit in the first inning. She swings away and fouls that first pitch off.
again, there was a lot of, you know, I was at Carroll when she uh, had to leave a game with that knee, and she mi she missed, she left the Carroll game with a knee and then missed the Pioneer game. And there was, I think, a lot of concern about how she was going to negotiate this this season. But, I mean, she was right back at it and looking very really good since then. She's been a hot streak, but now she's down on the county row and two. Popped up. Foul. Can Lambert get there? Nope. Count hangs at 0 and 2. Aubrey has struck out seven times in 19 at bats. And a strikeout number eight on the season as she takes a call third. Outside corner at the knees. Play shortstop, number number Wilson. Wilson. Strikeout number five for Suthman. That will bring up Aubrey Wilson. Aubrey is one for one with single. Making the first, advance to second on the throw. Suthman throws a first pitch strike again. I don't think Suthman's speed is what stands out. It's her location. She just pinpoints every pitch. Hit in the air to left, and that's hit really well. Back to the wall. It's gone. Obbs hit it out. Maybe that was the announcer jinx. I said, <laughs> it seems to seemingly dots every corner, but Aubrey took her out. Wow. A two-run homer, and Rochester takes a 2 nothing lead. Braylon Hunter. Braylon Hunter will bat. Well, Pershing kept going back. I again, it's it's windy out there. I don't, I'm not sure if the wind helped that or hurt it or she hit it through the wind. Uh, that was. First pitch strike to Hunter. The weather forecast is kind of for kind of a pop-up thunder shower around 7 o'clock. Fly to shallow right field, but it is going to be caught. Culver was playing shallow and ran that one down. Out number two. That will bring up the freshman pitcher, Bria Rensberger. Bria struck out her first time up. Foul ball off Lambert, and I got her in the chest protector. Side. Again, Rochester's first five conference games are at home. Home with Southwood tonight, home with Northfield on Monday, home with Manchester next Wednesday, home with Wabash on April 29th, and home with McConaughey on May 1st. This ball. And then the last four are on the road. Starting May 6th at Peru, at North Miami, at Whitco, and at Lewis Cass. Ball just foul. Lewis Cass was they were in their first year in the conference. They were right in the thick of things in the TRC girls basketball wise, and I think they're going to be a factor in softball as well. Two and two. Got her swinging with the rise ball. Strike on number six for Sutphin. Rochester scores two runs on two hits in the inning. No errors, nobody left. At the end of three innings, Rochester two, Southwood zero, and you're watching RTC TV4. We are back here at Fansler Field. As we are ready for the top of the fourth inning, it'll be good pasture, Lambert, and Ashba. Big inning here for Rensberger. They're two, three, four hitters, and these 
He's one of the better two, three, fours in the conference, you'd have to think. First pitch is high. Ball two. Rowan Goodpasture struck out her first time up. She's a junior, and she is their second baseman. 11 for 21 on the year, including that strikeout. Still hitting over 500. On off, 2 and 1. Three from Rensberger. We have some uh, men's college basketball news that might be of interest to you if you're watching this game. Corey Barnett is leaving his assistant coaching job in Nevada and taking an assistant coaching job at West Virginia. Of course, Corey, a 2008 Rochester grad. Strike two call, three and two. So, Corey taking a job with a new coach there, uh, Darian DeVries, who left Drake and took the head coaching job with West Virginia, and he's adding Corey Barnett to his coaching staff. Three and two. Foul ball. Uh, Hunter can't quite get there. That was out of play. Count hangs at three and two. So, of course, Darian DeVries is the new coach, and they've got a new point guard, Tucker DeVries. That's Darian's son, and he is a big-time player. Average, what, 21 points a game. Drake made it to the tournament this year. Got her looking. Strike on number nine. I'm not sure what that was. Was that a change? I think it was a change or maybe a curve. Grace Lambert, the batter, she struck out swinging her first time. Lambert hit, uh, came in hitting 333. High ball. Southwood has two home runs as a team, and Lambert has one of them. Ashba, who's on deck, has the other one. And Southwood in Class 1A, sectional 52. Swing and a miss. They're in the same section with Caston and West Central. Caston's ranked number five in Class 1A this week, and West Central's ranked number seven. But again, that's it's not a big surprise that that section's going to be one of the tougher ones in the 1A North. Two and one. Three and one. Swing and a miss, three and two. Some other Rochester uh, sports news. The girls' tennis team is hosting Whitco today. Three and two. Ball ball. Popped up. Who's got it? Mia Hadashell does second out of the inning. Like good battle there. That's a good hitter, and Bria continued to compete. He got the pop up. That'll bring up Izzy Ashba. Ashba struck out looking her first time up. Outside. 
Ashbrook came in hitting 529 on the year, 9 for 17. Three of her nine hits for extra bases. She's got a double, a triple, and a homer. And she leads the team with eight RBI, swing and a miss. Rochester with another home game tomorrow night against John Glenn. Get the baseball game tomorrow night at home. Rochester baseball is hosting Pioneer tomorrow night. A little tapper. Tough play. And Medina will have to put it in her back pocket. That's an infield single for Ashba. And that is Southwood's first hit. And that will bring up Natalie Sutphin. Sutphin struck out looking her first time up. So. Let's see, you're, you're Southwood, you're down by two. You have one hit in this game, and that was a little, excuse me, tapper. Rolled out there perfectly. Let's see if Coach Carl Pace has Ashba on the move. Put in the air, and it's caught by Rensberger to retire the side. Nice play by Bria. Helps to be, what, six feet, six one? And she was able to snag that little pop up by Sutphin. For Southwood on the top of the fourth, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. End of three and a half, Rochester leads Southwood two to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV4. We are back at Fansler Field here in the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Field, Heinzman, and How to Shell do for Rochester. Field struck out swinging her first time up. Popped up. Foul, but playable, and Thomas makes the catch. Mr. Hawes. Saying, oh, she almost dropped it. Just can't wait to charge kids with an error. Just always thrilled to cite errors and Mistakes by other players. Bunt try, but Sutphin has it, and flips to Thomas for the out. Two up, two down. We'll bring up Mia Hadeshell. Mia struck out swinging her first time up. Swings of the first pitch and fouls it off. We've, we've been talking. Mr. Hawes is noticing this as well. So he now he's got my mind kind of on this. He says that they've been swinging early in the count of late. Strike going two, and just as I say that, she takes a pitch. But yeah, at, at some point it's not about you're just not a. You can't just be happy to make contact and put it in play. You've got to want to make hard contact. Fall off. They need some softballs. In Rochester, a home game with John Glenn tomorrow night, and then they're at Twin Lakes on Friday. Outside. Got her looking. Inside corner. I don't know if that was maybe a screwball. So how to shell strikes that for the second time. And that retires the side. Strike at number seven for Sutman. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of four innings. Rochester leads Southwood two to nothing. And you're watching RTC TV4. Haven Shipper struck out looking her first time. Southwood has had two base runners through their first four innings. There's a the bunner way on. Mia Hadeshell fields it and tags her. One up, one down. That will bring up Maddie Culver. Culver struck out her first time. Thomas led off the game with a walk, and their other base runner was Ashba, who reached in an infield single in the fourth.
but foul. 0 and 1. Ball one and one. Rochester had three infield positions they had to fill after last year. With the graduations of Maddie Heinzman and, and Emma Howdeshell and Carly Coleman. One and two. So the defense has been a work in progress as well. Got her looking inside corner. Strikeout number 10. Two up, two down in the inning. That'll bring up Lily Combs, the shortstop. Combs struck out swinging her first time up. Just high. And not only did Rochester replace three quarters of the infield, but they have a new catcher. Jaden Field has caught the lion's share of the innings this year. Of course, Rochester graduated Callie Watson and Callie. Remember, Callie had a home run at Southwood last year. Swing and a miss, two and one. Really the only players, the only two players are in the same position that they were last year. Miley Heinzman at second and Dara Strauss out in the center. Ball three. Well, again, nobody on two out. I think you just have to, you don't want to get too fancy here. Base on balls, and it goes to the backstop. Well, I'll bring up Haley Pershing, who struck out her first time. So let's see if, let's see if Combs will be on the move here. Swing and a miss, throw back, safe. Now, if Combs gets thrown out trying to steal or if she gets picked off, then you have to lead off the next inning with your number nine hitter. That's not great. So that would be one reason maybe why not to steal. Or, but again, you're down by two, and you have to get something going here. Ground ball right side, in the right field for base hit. Wild throw by Hunter. Combs turning, the throw to the plate. Safe. And going to second is Pershing. Tremendous base running by Lily Combs. Two to one now. And now the lineup does turn over and Riley Thomas will get to hit with the potential tying run in scoring position. I don't think even a perfect throw to first would have gotten Pershing out. And it was a wild throw, went all the way to the to the backstop from right field. And Combs hustling all the way, just did beat the throw to the plate. Rensberger was there to cover. But Combs beat the play in a head first slide. So it's two to one now. One, that pitch was high. So again, the first time through the order, Rensberger struck out eight. The second time through the order, she struck out two. It's the third time through the order. 
Popped up foul, one and two. One, two. Ball two. Ball's been put in play three times, is sitting all three times on the ground. Two, two. Rounder to third, knocked down by Medina. But it, and it's going to be a base hit as Heinzman actually runs it down. Infield single for Thomas. And moving to third on the play is Pershing. And Medina deflected it. It deflected away. Wilson was had moved to her right, so she kind of overran it because she was tracking. So it was really Heinzman who wound up having to pick it up, and we're going to have a timeout here with Scott Hodeschel talking to Rensberger and the battery and the entire infield. Runners at first and third, two outs, top five. Rochester leading two to one, and Rowan Goodpasture, who came in with a 550 batting average, is coming to the plate. Goodpasture struck out twice. I think what your what Coach Pace has to be telling good pastor is do you take a pitch here and let Thomas steal second? First pitch is high, and Thomas will take second. So that takes the force out of the equation and puts the potential. Go ahead, run in scoring position, and good pastors add in the count. Ball two. Hit her with a pitch. Bases loaded. Now we're bringing up Grace Lambert. Lambert has struck out and popped to first. We have another mound meeting here, a circle meeting between. Sometimes it's just no coaches involved, just Field and Rensberger. Baseball, Rochester and Southwood remain tied 1 1. They're now in the bottom of the sixth. We are in the top of the fifth here. First pitch is high to Lambert. Four consecutive batters are reached base. Walk single, infield single, hit by pitch. Strike, 1 and 1. It's all started after nobody on and two out. Foul off one and two. Grace Lambert, the sophomore catcher. One, two. 
fouled off. Kind of lunged out of that one, was able to make contact. Fly ball to right. Can Hunter get there? No, it goes overhead and it's going to go all the way to the wall. This should score three runs. One run is in, two runs in. Here comes Thomas. Throw in a third. It's a wild throw. And here comes Lambert and she will also score. A three run triple and, that, and an error and she scores on that and Southwood now leads five to two. Again, it was interesting because Lambert didn't seem like she was able to kind of pull Rensburg. I mean, really nobody has, but she was able to. Able to hit that one to deep right field. Hunter had no chance of that, and then the throw was not cut off, and it just sailed to the side fence. And Ashbrook gets the uh, Little League home run, so to speak. I would say it's a little league grand slam. All of a sudden, five to two. Got now 0 and 1 on Ashba, who reached on an infield hitter last time. One and one. Ball, one and two. The dust beginning to kick up, the wind's only getting stronger. Pitch is high, two and two. Two. High, ball three. I was kind of sailing on Rensburg a little bit. Three and two. Liner to right. Base hit. Ashba with her second hit. Six consecutive batters to reach base. And now we'll bring up the ninth batter of the inning, Natalie Sutphin. Sutphin has struck out looking, and she uh, had a little pop up to the pitcher her last time up. She's 0 for 2. Started with a walk to the number eight batter in the lineup. Strike. Pitch is high. There goes Ashbrook. She'll steal a second easily. Well, that's... Again, Ashbrook's got good speed. But kind of fell asleep there. One and one. Fouled off. One and two. Yeah, 
and sometimes you're so worried about getting the batter in the box and you're straight, you know, you want to locate your pitches right, and then you get about the base runner. Got her looking, and that retires the side. Strikeout number 11, but Southwood scores five runs in the inning. Four hits. Two errors and one left. At the end of four and a half innings, it's Southwood 5, Rochester 2, and you're watching RTC TV 4. And, uh, we go to the bottom of the fifth. It'll be Medina, Strasser, and Miller due for Rochester. down by the third baseman and the throw is in time. Nice job by Thomas to stretch out. Medina grounds up to third to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Avon Shipper, the freshman third baseman. Nice pick. And gets help from her first baseman. Put in play by Strasser. Set for the Thomas for the out. That will bring up Aubrey Miller. for two, singled back in the first, struck out looking in the third. And again, this game's not over, but one thing you would probably guess is that Sutphin's not going to lose this game because of walks. You have to hit your way on. Southwood in five games this year. They're four and one in those five games. They had allowed 12 runs all season. So a little over two and a half a game. Pop up foul. Out of play. Might have gone to the might have stayed in play, but way too far for Combs or for the left fielder uh, Pershing to get there. So kind of still 0 and 2. Sutphin has retired seven in a row since the home run by Wilson. Fouled off, 0 2. Got her to retire the side. Strikeout number eight for Sutphin. For Rochester in the bottom of the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of five. It's Southwood five and Rochester two, and you're watching RTC TV4. All right, we are back at Fansler Field. It will be Shipper, Culver, and Combs due for Southwood here in the top of the sixth. They lead Rochester five to two. Val Sitsuris, Steve... Stricker is here. Chris Bake is here. Here for the TRC opener in softball. Strike temperatures today. I guess highs in the mid 60s. But windy. It doesn't feel warm. And overcast. It started around what 520 or so. It's 642 right now. Which is high.
Swing and a miss. Shipper struck out looking back in the second inning, and she grounded out to first last time up, trying to bunt her way on. Got her swinging on a change. Strike on number 12. And one up, one down in the inning, and that will bring up the senior right fielder, Maddie Culver, who's over two with two strikeouts. Fly ball to center. Dara Strasser makes the catch. Two up, two down. That will bring up Lily Combs. She has struck out swinging and walked. It was that walk that got their rally started in the top of the fifth with nobody on and two out. when Mr. Haas says, turn your lights off, they just turn their lights off. These people are just leaving the field completely. They're just not going to. One and two to count. Outside, two and two. Rochester has broken through over at Bob Copeland Field. RBI single by Brady Beck. Brent Beck scores on an error. RBI double by Coleman. Two-run homer by Pollock. Rochester 6-1 over Southwood. In baseball, top of the seventh. Round ball right side. Miley Heinzman has it. Throws to Hottishell for the out, and that retires the side. So a 1-2-3 inning for Rensberger in the sixth. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of five and a half innings, it's Southwood 5 and Rochester 2, and you're watching RTC TV 4. We are back at Fansler Field. You're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Wilson, Hunter, and Rensberger. So you think if the Z Lady Z's are going to rally here, it's going to have to happen now. Your 2 3 4 hitter is down by three in the sixth inning. We have a baseball final. Rochester has defeated Southwood 6 to 1. To deep right center. One hops the wall. Wilson. She's going to try for third. A good throw is a chance to get her, but she's going to be safe. A triple. <laughs> Runner at third, nobody out, and Braylon Hunter's the batter. Ball gets away. Here comes Wilson. Throw to the plate. She scores. It's a wild pitch. Five to three. Well, Mr. Hawes said Sutphin hasn't shown that she's tiring. Well, maybe throwing one in the dirt is a sign. Or leaving one up to Wilson, so. Count now 1 0 to Hunter. Rip to center field. Right at Ashba. Ashba's 
we saw her play in last year's sectional. She is one of the better center fielders you'll see. But good contact, though. By Hunter. 0 for 3 to show for it. Foul ball to Rensberger, who has struck out both times. Bria came in a 263 hitter coming into today's game. She was 5 for 19 with two RBIs. That's a good 0 2 pitch if you're Sutphin. And a good take by Bria. Yeah. And Bria does not have an extra base hit yet. And I. Again, she, she's so strong and such a good athlete. I, I, I think the hitting part is going to come eventually. Ooh, almost, Bria almost ducked into that one. Two and two. By three, Southwood here, bottom of the sixth. Rochester's out hit Southwood, five to two. Trail by two. Popped up. Foul. Can Lambert get there? She dropped it. That's an error. E2. And the bat stays alive. Lambert. I mean, she measured it. I mean, she was waiting for it. Tried a basket catch and missed it. Just plopped out of her glove. Two and two. Got her looking. So Sutphin bails out her catcher as they get the out anyway. Nobody on, two out for Jaden Field. Jaden has struck out and fouled to first. Pitches outside. I saw a picture of Jaden's uh, sister on Facebook. She's Jaden's sister plays on the middle school softball team. I think she's a catcher also. I know uh, Jaden's sister plays for the Rockets. Could have a, quite a few. We can have a field day here. Here at Fansler over the next, what, like six years or so. Ball. Then Purdue will have an eight-foot center who will just devour opponents, just eat them alive. 3-0 the count. Up the middle, that's a base hit. Field aboard. I'm going to bring up Miley Heinzman. So let's see. Miley is 0 for 2. She's popped a second. And grounded out to the pitcher trying to bunt her way on. Let's see if Rochester goes with the courtesy runner. Looks like no. Foul ball. And this is a different Miley. She's she's been spraying line drives all over the place. To right center field. Can Ashbury get there? She does, and that retires the side. Rochester scores one run on two hits in the inning. No errors and one left. At the end of six innings, it's Southwood 5 and Rochester 3, and you're watching RTC TV 4. We are back here at Fansler Field. Ready for the top of the seventh, and Southwood leads Rochester 5-3. to three. Yeah, 
It will be 9-1-2 and two in the Southwood lineup. Pershing, Thomas, and Goodpasture do here against Rendsburg in the top of the seventh. And again, Rochester's got seven, eight, nine, and their batting order due up in the bottom of the seven. So in the end, it's not looking too great here, but to give yourself the best chance, you're going to have to put up a zero this inning. Uh, all off, one and one. And Rochester with another home game tomorrow night against John Glenn at 5.30. Two and one. We'll be at the baseball game against Pioneer. Pioneer at Rochester in baseball tomorrow at 5. Swing and a miss, two and two. Tough loss for Pioneer baseball yesterday. They lost 11 to 8 to Winnemac. They led that game 8-6 to six going into the bottom of the sixth, but Winnemac scored five. So Pioneer and Winnemac split their two-game set. Popped up, foul out of play, 2-2. Two two. Up the middle, base hit. Pershing. Boy, she has been big for them. She's two for three today out of the ninth spot in the batting order. We'll bring up Riley Thomas. I know a lot of teams like to use that ninth spot for that uh, second leadoff hitter, the double leadoff. By the way, Steve, uh, Miley uh, Macy Hinderleiter has been hitting leadoff for Caston past couple of games. Yeah. Lead off, lead off. I think it's been uh, the top four spots have been Hinderleiter, Zimpleman, Logan, and Scales has been in cleanup. So trying some things. And they put 13 runs up at the board against North Judson last night. That ball is not fielded by Wilson. Miller backs up the play, but that is an E6. On the play, Pershing advances to second. So first and second, nobody out, and Rowan Goodpasture, the second baseman, is the batter. Goodpasture's 0 for 2, but she has scored a run. She was hit by a pitch and scored ahead of that three-run triple by Lambert back in the fifth. We're now in the seventh. Offered is what the home plate umpire says. That's a strike, 0 and 1. Pop fly to shallow right field. Hunter makes the catch. Runners hold. First and second with one out for Grace Lambert. Obviously, neither Pershing nor Thomas are going to take a risk, especially with one of their studs coming up. Grace Lambert, one for three. Strike out on the first, pop to first in the fourth. And the big hit in this game, a three-run triple in the fifth, and she came around to score in an error. They scored four runs on that play. Fouled off. Caston, West Central, and Southwood are all in the same class 1A sectional. 0-1. Fly ball to right, hit very, very well. Hit very well over the head of Hunter. This is going to bring in two more runs. It's another triple for Lambert. Mm -hmm. 
and both of her big hits to right field. Seven to three. One of the runs is unearned because of the air. But the big bat of Grace Lambert strikes again. Five RBIs in this game. And again, the first time through the batting order, the first but 12 batters of the game, Southwood had zero hits. Now they've got seven hits. That's We talk about that a lot. It's not can you score 15 runs against bad pitching. It's can you score five, six, or seven against good pitching. Pop up, shortstop. Wilson makes the catch. Hanging out a third is Lambert. Two down. So nice job to get a tough hitter in Ashbout in an RBI situation. We'll bring up the pitcher, Natalie Sutphin. She has struck out looking, popped to the pitcher, and struck out looking again, 0 for 3. Ball off. It's really dark and windy now. Here at Fansler. Strike. This is some billowing pants. Hi, one and two. Field fakes a throw to third. Pitch, ground ball to Rensberger, and she throws to Hadeshell for the out to retire the side. But Southwood scores two runs in the inning. Two hits, one air, one left. At the end of six and a half, Southwood leads Rochester seven to three. And you're watching RTC TV4. Rochester has their number seven, eight, and nine hitters due up in this bottom of the seventh. It'll be Hadeshell, Medina, and Strasser. Mia yeah, Hadeshell is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. high. And it got, things got off to a great start for the Lady Z's and a two-run homer by Aubrey Wilson in the bottom of the third. They led 2-0 after four. Chopper, foul. And then Rensberger got the first two batters out in the top of the fifth, and then walk, single, infield single, hit by pitch. Three-run triple, error, Promising start was a 5-2 deficit. Rochester trying to dig out of the hole here. Bottom of the sixth, Wilson tripled and scored on a wild pitch, but then another two-run triple by Lambert in the top half of this, and he made it 7-3. Comebacker, set them to first. One up, one down here in the seventh. Foul. 
One and two. Popped up. Foul is a play ball. Up hits the top of the Southwood dugout. Kind of hangs at one and two. Got her looking inside corner. Strikeout number 10 for Sutphin. Ground ball to right field. Should be a base hit, and it is. Dare is two for three. So that will bring up Aubrey Miller. Well, if Lenny can get on here, then you can give Wilson a shot. Pop up. That might be trouble, but it drops foul near the third base coaching box, 0-1. Rochester baseball won today, six to one for Southwood. Zero oh and two. And now Aubrey's really gonna have to protect. Throw back to first, safe. One and two. Dara cannot get too daring in this situation. Not four runs down in the seventh inning. Foul ball. That's the truth, Dara. We're playing our game of truth or Dara. One and two. Got her looking, and that will do it. Natalie Sutphin, an outstanding sophomore pitcher, and she showed why today. 11 strikeouts. She had at least one strikeout in every inning. She fell behind early, 2 nothing. Held Rochester to one run over the final four innings and waited for her offense to do some damage, and the Southwood Lady Knights defeat Rochester. Seven to three.